Trump on latest mass killing President Trump is in Japan today where it is already Monday night. North Korea tops his agenda, but the latest mass shooting in the United States has overshadowed the first day of his Japan visit. Trump says the 26-year-old man who gunned down at least 26 people in a small Texas church during Sunday service was a very deranged individual. Sutherland Springs, Texas, such a beautiful, wonderful area with incredible people. Who would ever think a thing like this could happen? The Texas church massacre occurred one month after a gunman in Las Vegas killed 58 people and wounded more than 500, firing from his 32nd-floor hotel room into a crowd of country music fans. As in that case, the president has said it's not the time to talk about any changes in U.S. gun laws. We have a lot of mental health problems in our country, as do other countries, but this ISNT a guns situation, Trump said at a news conference in Japan early this morning Washington time. I mean we could go into it, but it's a little bit soon to go into it, but fortunately, somebody else had a gun that was shooting in the opposite direction. Otherwise it would have been as, as bad as it was, it would have been much worse, Trump said. This is a mental health problem at the highest level. Discharged for bad conduct suspect Devon Patrick Kelly is dead, after crashing his car following a chase by armed citizens. The cause of death is unclear. The Air Force says Kelly was busted down to the lowest rank and discharged for bad conduct, after a court-martial for assaulting his wife and child. Kelly received a bad conduct discharge confinement for 12 months and a reduction to the grade of E-1, said Anne Stefanek, an Air Force spokeswoman at the Pentagon. Record checks confirmed Evan P. Kelly was previously a USAF member, who served in logistics readiness at Holloman AFB, Nanometer, from 2010 until his discharge in 2014. Trump in Japan besides again denouncing North Korea for its nuclear and missile programs, Trump also put on his salesman's cap and exhorted Japan to buy more American military hardware. Japanese President Shinzo Abe is ordering a lot of military equipment, Trump said, as he should be. Trump has long said Japan should do more to provide for its own defense. In remarks to U.S. troops at Yokota Air Base, Trump also had hardware on his mind. As long as I am president, servicemen and women who defend our nation will have the equipment, the resources and the funding they need to secure our homeland, to respond to our enemies quickly and decisively, Trump said, and when it's necessary to fight, to overpower and to always win. Trump also called Japan a treasured partner and crucial ally of the United States. Trump did raise some eyebrows with an off-the-cuff comment at a news conference with Abe in which the president called on Japanese car makers to build their cars in the U.S. We love it when you build cars for your Japanese firm. We love it. Try building your cars in the United States instead of shipping them over. Is it possible to ask that's not rude? Is that rude? I don't think so. About 75% of Japanese cars are built in North America, and Toyota's biggest factory is in Kentucky. Plug for Boeing I'm very optimistic about the future of our economic partnership, Trump said in a meeting with business leaders. We are proud, for instance, that, after the United States, Japan is the largest owner of Boeing aircraft. Greatest commercial aircraft in the world. You know, Melania had some of your stock. You know what happened when I won, she was forced to sell it. Fantastic. Great job you're doing. And I do love the F-18 also. I love the F-18. Putin on Trump's dance card before Trump arrived in Japan on Sunday during his nearly two-hour week tour through Asia, he hinted to reporters on his plane that he may be meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin. About six and a half hours into the eighth-hour flight from Hawaii to Japan, Trump walked back into the press cabin and spoke for just under 12 minutes. During that exchange, Trump strongly suggested the meeting with Putin would happen during a regional summit in Vietnam. I think it's expected we'll meet with Putin, yeah. We want Putin's help on North Korea, and we'll be meeting with a lot of different leaders, Trump told reporters. No help from Russia earlier in the weekend, the Kremlin said Russia and the US have no cooperation when it comes to addressing the North Korea crisis. There is no cooperation so far, Dmitry Peskov, spokesman for Putin, told reporters Saturday. Only periodic exchanges of views. Trump's team has clashed with Russian and Chinese diplomats at the United Nations, where Western diplomats have tried to lead a peaceful pressure campaign of economic sanctions that might induce North Korea to stop developing nuclear weapons and ballistic missiles. They have had some success, but China and Russia want Trump to defuse the crisis by suspending military exercises in the region. 
Good Monday morning and welcome to Jamie McIntyre's Daily on Defense, compiled by Washington Examiner National Security Senior Writer Jamie McIntyre at Jamie A. McIntyre, National Security Writer Travis J. Tritton at Travis underscore Tritton and Senior Editor David Brown at Dave underscore Brown 24. Email us here for tips, suggestions, calendar items and anything else. If a friend sent this to you and you'd like to sign up, click here. If signing up doesn't work, shoot us an email and we'll add you to our list. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at Daily and Defense. Happening today Defense Secretary Jim Mattis is overseas again, this time visiting Finland, Belgium and the United Kingdom. In Helsinki today, Mattis is scheduled to meet with Finnish President Sauli Niiristo and attend a meeting of the Northern Group, a gathering of 12 countries. Those include the five Nordic countries of Finland, Sweden, Denmark, Iceland, Norway, the three Baltic countries of Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, as well as Germany, the Netherlands, Poland, and the UK. All but two of the members, Sweden and Finland, are members of NATO. From Finland, Mattis travels to Brussels for a scheduled meeting of NATO defence ministers, and then to London to meet with the new British defence minister Gavin Williamson. Williamson was named to replace Sir Michael Fallon, who resigned last week, the latest British politician to quit too after claims of sexual harassment in Parliament. Fallon said his past behaviour may have fallen short of the standards expected by the UK military. Cyber Fights N. Mark Warner wants the United States to develop a strategy for fighting cyber wars against other countries in response to the meddling in the 2016 elections by Russia. The Virginia Democrat says HES in agreement with Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, who called for retaliation against Russia in response to the 2016 election meddling in an interview on NBC's Meet the Press. I actually agree with the Majority Leader that we need a cyber doctrine, he said. For a long time, I think we have had incoming, whether it was Russians, Chinese, others, where we've had cyber attacks, misinformation, disinformation attacks. We need to have both defense and offensive capabilities. Soldier IDD The Pentagon has identified the soldier killed Saturday in Afghanistan as Sergeant First Class Stephen Cribbin, 33, who died from injuries sustained during operations in Afghanistan's East and Logar province. Cribbin is from Simi Valley, Kalof, and was assigned to 2nd Battalion, 10th Special Forces Group in Fort Carson, Colo. Cribbin's death Saturday is the second in Logar province in recent weeks. The incident is under investigation, the Defense Department said. Hitting ISIS hard Trump said Friday right before leaving the White House that the U.S. military has hit the Islamic State harder over the last few days following the deadly terror attack in New York City, after the terror group called the attacker a soldier of the caliphate. ISIS just claimed that a generous animal who killed, and so badly wounded, the wonderful people on the West Side, was their soldier, Trump tweeted. Based on that, the military has hit ISIS much harder over the last two days. They will pay a big price for every attack on us however, daily strike totals released by U.S. Central Command show no increase in totals over the past week. Totals typically hover between 5 and 15 on a given day. The strike total on November 1 was 11, followed by 13 on Thursday. Over the weekend the U.S.-led coalition reported 14 strikes consisting of 33 engagements against ISIS terrorists, almost all in Syria and one in Iraq. The war in Somalia U.S. Africa Command announced on Friday that two U.S. airstrikes killed several Islamic State militants in northeastern Somalia. The strikes occurred midnight and 11 a.m. local time, and a statement said officials are assessing the results. The statement didnt say it, but it's possible this is what Trump was referring to when he talked about hitting ISIS much harder. AFRICOM said the strikes were conducted in coordination with the government. U.S. forces will continue to use all authorized and appropriate measures to protect Americans and to disable terrorist threats, AFRICOM said, adding that targets include terrorists, training camps and havens throughout Somalia. Meanwhile U.S. officials have been ordered to leave Mogadishu due to the risk of terrorist attacks, the State Department announced in a bulletin. Due to specific threat information against U.S. personnel on the Mogadishu International Airport, the U.S. mission to Somalia has directed its non-essential U.S. citizen employees to depart Mogadishu until further notice, the State Department warned Saturday. Missed Opportunity South Carolina Sen. Lindsey Graham is still fuming over the decision to allow the suspect in the New York City truck attack to go right into the federal court system before anyone can interrogate him for possible intelligence about ISIS. 
I don't mind trying this guy in New York court, the New York terrorist, but what I wanted to do was hold him for a long period of time, let our military, CIA, interrogate him about what he knows about terrorism, how he got radicalized, Graham told Fox News Sunday. He said he was a soldier of the caliphate. ISIL says he was a soldier of the caliphate. We talk to him for one day in the hospital. We read him in his Miranda rights. We throw him right in court and we can't get any intelligence going forward because now HES been lawyered up. Graham complained that Trump is following the Obama playbook, and said when he questioned the Trump Justice Department about the decision. The explanations he got made him so mad he couldn't see straight. They said the reason they did and he declare the New York guy an enemy combatant, even though he pledged allegiance to ISIL, ISIL said he was one of their soldiers, he killed eight people in the name of radical Islam, showing support for ISIL, was because there's no evidence of command and control. That is ridiculous. It's hard to catch a terrorist, eh, Chris? And when you do, you should try to gather intelligence, Graham told Fox News host Chris Wallace. Privatizing War Blackwater Worldwide founder Eric Prince says he thinks Trump will eventually come around to his way of thinking, which he outlined in an opt six months ago. I wrote it for an audience of one, and it worked, Prince told the Washington Examiner in a recent interview. I got a call from the White House the day after it ran, and they said the president read it and liked it. As Trump was reviewing the strategy for Afghanistan, Prince proposed a viceroy in the mold of Gen. Douglas MacArthur, one of Trump's heroes who ruled occupied Japan after World War II, and troops replaced with contractors embedded with locals, modeled off the British East India Company. Whether it's six months or a year, I don't think the president wants to go into the midterms with thousands of American soldiers at risk, Prince said. Although he says he hasn't spoken to Trump since his inauguration, Prince said he has allies within the administration, more than you wouldn't think, and that the president speaks to people not just in the White House. The rundown Yon Hap news agency N Korea warns Trump about foolish remarks before S Korea visit Washington Post securing North Korean nuclear sites would require a ground invasion, Pentagon says New York Times Saudi prince, for asserting power, brings clerics to heal Washington Post hours before death in Niger, U.S. soldiers were targeting militants in Mali Ottawa citizen U.S. focuses on killing ISIL researchers, drone specialists, procurement officers app Saudal coalition warns Iran over Yemen missile launch app Yemen flights cancelled after coalition shuts all ports Wall Street Journal Pentagon releases Marine General held at Guantanamo in military commissions dispute Miami Herald federal judge blocks military judge from having U.S. Marshal seize defense attorney Washington Post Fat Leonard probe expands to ensnare more than 60 admirals military.com Bergdahl judge weighed complex leniency factors New York Times how the Kurdish quest for independence in Iraq backfired Reuters Lebanon PM Hariri resigned assails Iran and Hezbollah USNR I knew Spencer names first ship as SEC and AV after Vietnam War Marine Miguel Keith Calendar Monday, November 6, 9 a.m. 1000 Massachusetts Avenue. N.W. How do you solve a problem like North Korea? Kato.org 11 a.m. 1616 Rhode Island Avenue. N.W. Allies under the shadow Thailand, the Philippines, and the state of U.S. alliances in Southeast Asia. CSIS.org Tuesday, November 7, 8 a.m. 11790 Sunrise Valley Drive. How Washington Works Navigating the Dodd Course, NDIA.org 8 a.m. 1616 Rhode Island Avenue. NW. Global Security Forum 2017 with Sen. John McCain, James Clapper, former Director of National Intelligence, and William Lynn, CEO of Leonardo North America and DRS Technologies, CSIS.org 10 a.m. Rayburn 2172. Democracy and Governance in the Middle East and North Africa, foreignaffairs.house.gov 2 p.m. Rayburn 2172. Joint Subcommittee Hearing on Whether Russia is a Counter-Terrorism Partner or is Fanning the Flames, foreignaffairs.house.gov Wednesday, November 8, 9.30 a.m. 214 Massachusetts Avenue. Ni. The Trump Administration and the Future of the Roku, S. Alliance with Sen. Corey Gardner, Heritage.org 10 a.m. Dirksen 342. Nomination of Kirst Jen M. Nielsen to be Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security, hsgac.senate.gov 230p, m. 1789 Massachusetts Avenue. N.W. A Strategy for a Brighter Future in Libya Redefining America's Role, e.org 3 p.m. 1030 15th Street. N.W. 
the civilian elements of the new U.S. strategy in Afghanistan with Ahmad Nader Nadri, chairman of Afghanistan's Civil Service Commission, Atlanta Council.org 4 p.m. 1616 Rhode Island Avenue. And W. A book talk with Natalie Nguyen about America's forgotten allies, the soldiers of the Republic of Vietnam, CSIS.org Thursday, November 9, 7 a.m. 901 Massachusetts Avenue. And W. The fifth annual Defense One Summit with Jen. Stephen Wilson, Air Force Vice Chief of Staff Rep. Elise Stefanik and former Ambassador Wendy Sherman, DefenseOne.com 8 a.m. 2401 M Street. NW Defense Writers Group Breakfast with Sen. James Inhoff, Center Media Security.org 10 a.m. 1775 Massachusetts Avenue. NW Turkey, Europe and the U.S. New Challenges and Changing Dynamics, Brookings.edu 1030 a.m. Rayburn 2212. Lieutenant, Jen, Chris Nowland, Deputy Air Force Chief of Staff for Operations Vice ADM. Mike Shoemaker, Naval Air Force's Commander Lieutenant. Jen, Stephen Rudder, Deputy Marine Corps Commandant for Aviation and Marge. Jen, William Gaylor, Commander of the Army Aviation Center of Excellence Testify on Aviation Readiness, armedservices.house.gov 12 p.m. 1201 Pennsylvania Avenue. Mounting Challenges to U.S. Naval Power A Book Discussion with Sea Blindness Author Seth Cropsey and Rep. Mike Gallagher, Hudson.org 2 p.m. 1789 Massachusetts Avenue. N.W. Japanese Internationalism in an Era of Upheaval, E.org. 